Namo Bhutai, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learning essence from the uh, Middle Discourses 11, which is the shorter discourse on the Lion's Roar, right? Okay, so what is Lion's Roar? So Lion's Roar, this word is uh, coming in various discourses of the Buddha. Basically, Lion's Roar signifies fearless proclamation of the teachings of the Buddha. See, Buddha was a very, very gentle person. Right? As for what I've read and understood, but he was very clear about his awakeness and the supremacy of his teachings. So what he basically said that I am realized one and I am the supreme one. Right? It's even coming in the Dhammapada. So this is not like out of ego that is he is saying that. He is saying so whatever he says, Buddhism is all about Buddha's teachings is all about realism. When Buddha says Life is suffering. This is a reality. This is not pessimism. You view it from the eye, from your own eyes of pessimism. Right? So, similarly, Buddha said that I am a fully realized one. And like a lion, so there is this, uh, this simile of a lion. Like a lion when he roars in the jungle. You know, his roar is a mighty roar. Similar way, uh, you know, when the Buddha gave the first discourse uh, at uh, Sarnath, that was like the lion's roar. Right? And 10,000 world systems shook, right? When that knowledge was given about the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. So now what Buddha is exhorting the, the mendicants, right? Is that you also do a lion's roar, right? That means fearlessly proclaim the teachings of the Buddha. So, so Buddha had complete confidence in his teachings. That his teachings were unparalleled, without any doubt, right? So he said, he told the mendicants, so this particular uh, discourse is to the mendicants that, you know, pro, you know, do the lion's roar. So basically Buddha exhorts four kinds of individuals who possess the ability to deliver the lion's roar. Now who are these four kinds of people? These four people are the people who have achieved the various stages of awakening. That means first is the stream entry, person who has entered the stream. Second is a once returner, right, who has to return only once. Uh, in, in this world. Third is a non-returner. That means a person who doesn't need to return in this world. Fourth is a arahant. That means fully free from all defilements. So these four people, Buddha asked them to, you know, go ahead and proclaim fearlessly the knowledge of the Buddha, the, the Dhamma of the Buddha. Right? So, I have made a separate video on the four stages of awakening. So you can, you know, in detail I have discussed this particular uh, thing in that particular video. You can check that. So in this discourse, Buddha says one thing very clearly that the view of the permanent self is incorrect. And this is what separates Buddhism, Buddha's teachings from all the other teachings. Right? All the other teachings which recognize a permanent soul. Buddha goes even one step ahead. I will not say even one step. Ten steps ahead. And says that even when you talk about a soul, there is no permanency in the soul. There is all these various aggregates. Body, mind, mental formations, volition, consciousness, which are at play. You may look at that particular uh, uh, person as an independent soul, but it is not independent. It's because of the various causes and conditions that are working. So this is this is one of something which uniquely, you know, kind of uh, makes Buddha's teachings stand out from all the other teachings. So Buddha was very very clear on this, and he he did not shy away from saying that this is only my view. And, you know, I respect all other views. No, no, no. Buddha was very, very clear that there is no permanent self. If you are stuck in this view of a permanent self, then you will be stuck in this cycle of samsara. Right? Everything in this cycle of samsara is impermanent. That's why the suffering. That's why the craving. Right? And that's why. So it's like a chicken and egg story. Right? Because everything is impermanent and because we crave for it and because of that we suffer, Right? This whole cycle keeps on repeating itself. So, you have to understand that, you know, we are, nothing is permanent. When we get that understanding, then we will be able to get free from this cycle. Otherwise, this cycle will go on and on. So, one thing that is clearly coming out is, the view of permanent self is incorrect. Then Buddha talks about the four kinds of graspings. Right? Grasping, craving. Right? What are the four kinds of grasping? Sensual pleasures, right? Views, even attachment to views. Third, precepts, theories of the self, 
right? Sensual pleasures, views, precepts, theories of the self. Various religious theories uh, constructed about existence of a permanent self. All these are graspings, right? Now, they arise in ignorance, right? So, Buddha says these all kind of wrong views arise in ignorance. So, basically here, Buddha, if you see, Buddha is, a, you know, a small section of this is, like Buddha is talking about the dependent origination. From this, this arises, from this, this arises, right? So, if you have read the dependent origi origination sutra, you will be able to understand this, right? So, a bit of dependent origination, origination Buddha is trying. Buddha is trying to say that everything is based on something else, right? It's caused, it's a caused uh, thing. It's not existing independently, right? So, that is one, one thing that Buddha brought. Then Buddha said, till the person is free from this permanent self idea or the graspings, various graspings, then he will not be able to free from samsara. Then Buddha says, again, as Buddha says, as Buddha is, he was very, very clear about his knowledge and his standing. So Buddha says, fully awakened Buddha claims to propound the complete understanding of all kinds of grasping. Right? <clears throat> then Buddha says that when the mendicant has given up ignorance and given rise to knowledge, they don't grasp, they are not anxious. And not being anxious, they personally become extinguished. That means they become free. Their, their personality, their self is the idea of the self that they have it becomes over, they become free. Right? So this is the shorter discourse on the lion's roar. I've just you know made it as easy to understand for lay people as it can be. Do share your thoughts, reflections uh, uh, and feedback in the comment section. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddha.